Hello and shalom. My name is Steve Wahlberg. I'm Jewish, but unfortunately, like so many others, the Jewish family that I grew up in was 100% secular. Our home was nestled in a nice neighborhood in the uh, Hollywood Hills, just over the hill from Los Angeles in California. Yes, we did celebrate Passover with our Jewish neighbors, and we kept both Hanukkah and Christmas, which I thought was fabulous because uh, my brother and me and my sister, we all got lots of presents on December 25. But there was no prayer in our home. Uh, we never talked about God, and as a family, we never read the scriptures. When I entered my teenage years, I took a dangerous turn into a life of alcohol, drugs, and wild living, mainly because that's what my friends did, and so, as they say, uh, monkey see, monkey do, that's what I did. When I reached the age of, of 20, I tell you, my life was a mess, and I began to feel a deep need for something more, but I didn't know what it was. Uh, I don't have time to really go into all the details, but one day, a man I hardly knew handed me a copy of a book called The Desire of Ages about the life of Jesus. I had no real reason not to read it, so I decided to check it out, and soon I could, I could hardly put this book down. Uh, when I got down to the final chapters, I read about Jesus' suffering in the Garden of Gethsemane, and finally about his being uh, cruelly crucified on a Roman cross. Chapter 53 in the book of Isaiah, the Hebrew prophet, uh, he predicted that our Messiah would be led like a lamb to the slaughter and that upon him would be laid the sin of us all. When I read those predictions in the scriptures and then I read about how Jesus died in fulfillment of those scriptures and then about how he actually rose from the dead on the third day, uh, I experienced an overwhelming conviction that he was the one that my heart needed. So I, I dropped to my knees for the first time in my life and I prayed a prayer, which was probably the first prayer I'd ever prayed in my life. I don't remember exactly what I said, but it was something like, dear God, uh, help me. Uh, in the name of Jesus, please forgive my sins and, and change my life. And I tell you, he did. Uh, I experienced a peace that I, I had never known. And that was nearly uh, 44 years ago. Now today, I am still happily married to my wife, my lovely wife, Kristen. We have two teenagers, Seth and Abby. I'm happy, I'm at peace, and I have an unshakable hope for the future. Many say that when a, a Jewish person becomes a believer in Jesus, he or she feels a sense of completeness. They call us completed Jews. Uh, as for me, uh, I can tell you that is exactly how I feel, and I definitely recommend Jesus to you. One more thing. When a Jewish person decides to believe in Jesus as his or her Messiah, uh, that doesn't mean that they stop being Jewish. Jesus was a Jewish. His disciples were Jewish. They studied the Torah. They all kept the Sabbath. The New Testament was written mostly by Jews. And finding your Messiah is a very Jewish thing to do. Uh, in the Torah, in the book of Numbers, in chapter 6, verses 24 to 26, Moses wrote these famous words, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And that is my hope and my prayer for you. Thanks for watching this.